There's a part of me that is interested in the outside world that goes, you get really uncomfortable. There's interest to do something else that, um, yeah, I may not be really good at. Joel Selwood is widely considered one of the most fearless players in AFL history. His peers have voted him the most courageous player of the season on four separate occasions. Drafted by DeLong in 2006 with pick number seven, he tasted success immediately as a part of the Cats' premiership side in his first season. Since, he's gone from strength to strength, winning two more premierships and leading the club as captain since 2012. Now in the twilight of his career, how does Joel reflect on what he's achieved and how has he planned for life after footy? This is The Plus Side, brought to you by Host Plus. Joel Selwood, thanks for your, your time. Thanks, Damo. Good to be here. Not wanting to put a window on what's left playing-wise, Joel, but are you going through those conversations now? Uh, you, you definitely, I definitely know that I'm uh, closer to finishing than starting. People ask, you know, what's next and stuff like that. There's parts of you that can't take your eyes off the game, um, you know, whether that's the drive in me that is a competitor. I suppose that's also part of setting up the future too, isn't it? To, to not um, dismantling the, the current even, is it? You, you can't, can you? Yeah, well, the one thing, you know, and speaking to people that are, you know, even outside the footy club, they, this is what, you know, I may be really good at in life and that may be the only thing that I'm really good at is, you know, going out and playing footy for a period of time. I feel comfortable in that I'll work to get on what's next um, and be ready and stuff like that, you know, get ready with, um, you know, the coaching courses and whatnot and the lead up to that or, you know, working away on administration staff or even finances, um, setting them up properly through management. And, and you're doing all that. And you do, you do all that along the journey. There's also just making sure that that journey is, you know... Done. Hey. Before, before you move on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, there's that footy thing that you're really good at. Make sure that you concentrate on that too because if you take your eyes off it for too long, then mm. um, you'll miss a boat. Have you got plans that you know of, Joel, without wanting you to pin you to them, but do they all involve footy in some respects or have you got other outside plans for what lies ahead? Um, yeah, I mean, I do, but, you know, the interest of having a family is um, obviously important to um, Brit and I, so... Look forward to that. There's a part of me that is interested in the outside world that goes, you get really uncomfortable um, because I, I came in as an 18 year old kid and um, you know I did feel comfortable straight away thanks to the Geelong Footy Club, to be honest. So um, there's interest to do something else that um, yeah I may not be really good at. That, that, that's the excitement of the apprehension, is it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and that might sound a bit strange to many, but whether that that plans out that way or not, we'll just have to wait and see. The 18-year-old that began the footy career back in 2006 is obviously a very different person to the, the one sitting in that chair right now. Yeah, it is. I mean, still with a lot of the same values, um, you know, just growing up, still a kid from Bendigo that uh, grew up with three brothers, mum and dad, um, loved my time. Um, and then just wanted to get the best out of himself. And I still see that in myself now. So uh, not too dissimilar, but obviously uh, had to grow up a little bit. You played in the very first game of your, your first season as, a, as an AFL player. When was it you first felt you, you did fit in? Yeah, it probably wasn't that first game. Uh, I had a bit of a stinker, to be honest. It was out here at Marvel Stadium against the Bulldogs. I came in and we, we had the position at the time called a fly forward, um, and it was Kenny Hinckley's forward line. And it was the job of that fly forward to basically chase out Cam Mooney and Nathan Ablett's man, but also put pressure on when it came into a forward line. It's not a role that I've played since. And uh, Kenny and I um, have joked many a times that he put the electric fence up on the 50 metre line that day. And uh, I haven't been allowed back in since. <laughs> OK. <laughs> So you get to the end of that first year and you, the magical finish has happened. You've, you're a premiership player in your, your first year. You then go into 2008 and miraculously you get to the grand final day and you've lost just one game of footy to a team you're not playing on the day itself and then yeah. you lose that, that game. So two years in, one premiership win, one grand final loss. What were you thinking at that stage of this already um, extraordinary career but a short one? Yeah, well, I thought it was pretty easy, to be honest. Um, not not only the game, but um, the way that we played. Um, you know, I was protected really well early on. Um, you know, the position that I played, I knew it. 
Um, I knew that I could go out and nail the um, brief that I had, basically. But I was growing. You know, I would actually nearly train harder than what I, some of the games would be because um, the side that we had, you know, the games were over within 20 minutes. It was brutal, like, and then, yeah, I mean, um, since that time you've heard about, you know, some of the get re some of the sessions get really heated and, and that all did happen. There was a level of respect always um, amongst the group that, um, that we were there to help each other. And after the third premiership, uh, the 2000 season, you officially made the captain. Um, how, how was that received at the time from, from your perspective? Was it something you thought was going to happen as 2011 unfolded? Um, I probably thought that I was in the... No, I didn't probably think. I, I knew that I was probably in the running at, at the time, only because of where the club was at, um, understanding the group a little bit. Um, there was a little bit of, you know, in-house bickering and, you know, fighting just to come with that competitive um, spirit that the boys had that not all of them got along um, throughout that time. So some of the guys... Um, our stronger leaders didn't even sit within the leadership group um, at particular times, but a lot of the messaging had to go through those people to... Um, Matty Scarlett, for one? Uh, he was one of them, yep. And then even throughout that time, there was a number of others. Um, yeah. You know, Stevie wasn't sitting in there, but he was a key person to have yeah. on side. Um, he's later on become, you know, a helper of mine. But even, even with that, you know, those in-house sort of bickerings, it was like, well, we'll follow the young kid um, and we'll make sure we support him. Can he sit it up and kick a third? It's a goal. The captain does it again. Joel, every club, every person in your position wants success. You've been had the luxury of having sustained success. Is there a key to it? Uh, the only thing I would put it down to is just having really high standards from the outset of, you know, getting back to training um, throughout a pre-season, but the challenge of keeping those high standards throughout the season too um, is really difficult when injuries come, um, challenges come when boys are a bit flat, even these COVID times, not at being able to get home. So dotting the I's, crossing the T's, doing the little things are as significant as, as anything you do in, yeah. in that regard. And having a big army of wanting to drive those too. Joe, you've always given the impression you've been able to I suppose, deflect the, the pressures of the world. And whether you do or not, I don't know, but that's the impression you give. Do you? The, the one thing that I look back on now, Paddy making his move from Adelaide made me even, you know, relax the shoulders a little bit more. Um, bringing in the, you know, the big ego that Paddy is and, um, you know, the fun that he brings with um, him coming across, but also the player that he is. At that time, I was probably getting drowned a little bit in... Um, the pressure of, um, you know, what's next for the footy club. And um, he, he helped big time in um, changing the, the course of the road for me um, in the captaincy. You know, we had, we've had big changeover in players throughout my time. So that's kept things fresh. But he, he was just a personality that um, helped my captaincy, I reckon. The courage component to, to your own game, I know it's just natural, it's, it's, it's how you're wired. Uh, do you, do you realise now that you've been in the system a while and it's a little bit different to pretty much every other player? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. I mean, I, I had a locker next to Tom Lonigan for, you know, 11 years and I would see it like this big scar on his chest from a collision that he had against Melbourne. Um, and little did I know at that time, I'd just come into the system in 2007, started 2007 and Tom was, the guy that was recovering from that big knock and, you know, he's 70 kilos and he has a wiry frame and he was close to being probably delisted within the next couple of years, but, you know, the club held on to him. Then he made this unbelievable career career out of it. And um, I, I always remind myself of, you know, courage is not only about those big knocks, but also, like, just blokes taking the field. He goes short. That's oh. going to be OK. Selwyn with courage. Without wanting to pat yourself on the back, do you think you've got more of that quality than most of them? Um, I think that I probably need a bit more of it because I probably don't have the actual skill that, you know, a lot of guys, you know, at that elite peak level have. Like, you know, I know that I've got to, you know, run a bit harder or, you know, work on the game a little bit more than um, maybe those guys that are blessed with that. And you still feel that way? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep, definitely. Yeah. And 
I think when that when I lose that, then I understand that it's probably time. And read it to perfection and lace out to Hawkins. You said before you listen, have you have you taken some advice that stayed with you from someone? So Tom Harley had moved up to Sydney and it was before the captaincy, before I'd taken over and Cameron Ling was sitting in the position, but yeah, there was obviously a lot of talk throughout that time and I was like, I'm just going to jump on a plane here and head up there. Um, and I caught up with Tom for a coffee at that time and, and he probably just reassured to me that you'll be ready, like, you know, th this will be fine and, and knowing the club, they'll, you, you'll get looked after and stuff like that. So it was more just being comfortable um, in my own shoes. But then in round one, we played Fremantle um, and Matthew Scarlett did the famous hit on Hayden <laughs> Valentine. And this is my first year at captaincy. It was a I'm, service to the community, wasn't he? You well, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Um, but, but not to you as a captain? Not to me as a captain. I, mean, I remember going, this is one of my first games as captain. And I still remember sitting, we, we were in the computer room at the time and um, Scarlo was looking over his edits and, you know, I was trying to work up the courage to go to him and go, are you, are you okay? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, I'll probably leave it there and I'll tell Barmy to look after this one. <laughs> Thanks for reflecting and, and also reflecting on what lies ahead too because it's all part of a, a footballer's journey. Thanks, Samo. It's been good.